Uh, scientists are calling this the worst coral bleaching event in Florida's recorded history. Millions of corals are literally starving to death because of the scorching ocean temperatures over the summer. We recently met up with a team of coral researchers from Chicago's famed Shedd Aquarium who were hoping to save some precious coral branches from Dry Tortugas National Park, once a thriving marine ecosystem, now a coral graveyard. Here's tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. It was supposed to be a rescue and recovery mission in Dry Tortugas National Park, about 68 miles west of Key West. And that's a location where the staghorn corals were uh, flourishing. There was large, healthy populations of those corals, uh, which we surveyed and studied uh, and collected in June. But in July, reports of a mass bleaching event that was devastating the Florida Keys, already in the grips of what was the hottest summer ever recorded on planet Earth. When this bleaching event started to unfold, we realized we needed to go back much sooner to see how these corals were doing and learn as much as we could from those corals and how they were responding to a natural bleaching event. So, a team of coral biologists from Chicago's famed Shedd Aquarium joined scientists from the University of Miami and other institutions on board Shedd's RV2 research vessel for the urgent expedition. They went back to survey the reef track in the Keys with a NOAA permit to bring back up to a thousand branches of critically endangered staghorn corals from the dry tortugas. You know, as we got further south in the trip um, and we started doing these surveys and looking around, we just weren't seeing any of those survivors. Ocean temperatures were already dangerously high, causing millions of corals to lose their symbiotic algae that feeds them, gives them color, turning them bleach white as they slowly starved to death. After three days of diving comprehensively across the, the national park in the Tortugas, 35 different locations where we had previously observed healthy populations of staghorn corals in, in June, just a couple of months ago, and we found that they were all dead. To see something on this scale, it's really tough to emotionally to see, you know, these, these animals that you care about and that you've been working so hard uh, to study, to understand, to just, yeah, essentially die in front of your eyes. It was a huge blow. Researchers thought these particular staghorns could be the key to saving the corals of tomorrow. They had survived heat stressors and disease in the past. We were actually testing their heat tolerance to identify individual strains of staghorn coral that have higher or lower heat tolerance that maybe better able to withstand coral bleaching events. It's now October and ocean temps are cooling down. In fact, some of the bleached coral we showed you in August at Chico Rocks near Isla Mirada is already starting to bounce back. But these mounding corals are more resilient. It's the branching corals that may be lost forever. We documented 90, 95% severe bleaching across coral species throughout the Keys and Dry Tortugas. The endangered staghorn and elkhorn coral the team surveyed were nearly all dead. Populations just collapsed in such a short period of time. It's like losing the trees in a rainforest to lose the corals. Without the corals, the whole ecosystem will just literally start to crumble. And so instead of having this, you know, really diverse, thriving space, when you lose those corals, those coral skeletons start to break down and you're literally like watching the whole ecosystem crumble before your eyes. 25% of all marine life depends on healthy coral reefs and it's not known what the long-term effects will be of this bleaching event. The planet is only getting warmer, and unless we address climate change with the urgency this moment of time is calling for, scientists fear events like this will continue to happen all over the world. Every tenth of a degree of additional warming matters, and every bit of warming that we can prevent um, will lead to greater survival of corals in the future. And so that nugget of hope is that, you know, there are still corals, they are still alive out there, and this is the perfect time for folks to engage on a level that they haven't before. And the hope is that many of the bleach corals will somehow recover now that ocean temperatures are finally cooling back down, but even if they come back, those corals are now much more stressed leaving them more susceptible to disease. So the final assessment of just how devastating the summer was to our reefs is still not known. Since the 1970s, Florida's reefs have lost more than 90% of their coral cover.
That's why coral research is so important, finding those heat and disease tolerant strains and propagating them. If you'd like to support the Shed Aquarium's research or learn more about saving corals, scan that QR code with your phone. It'll take you straight to the Don't Trash Our Treasure page on Local 10. Dot com a dire picture indeed oh it's just so sad to think that just uh, they're just yeah. dying before everybody's eyes and there's and nothing anyone can do about all it. of those coral frags that were saved by all these wonderful organizations they're now in labs but what do you do you can't outplant them because next mm -hmm. summer what happens if the ocean temperatures Same warm thing. up again yep. so until we address the root cause of this which is climate change this is an uphill battle right wow it's frightening yeah